Hello once again. I am Muhammad Kamran Halil from YouTube channel The Physics Gurus. Students, we have already discussed uh, the chapter which we have started from O level physics, unit number 2, kinematics 5054. Already we have discussed the speed, velocity, acceleration, distance, and displacement. Now in this topic, we will discuss a very important part of the kinematics which is related with the graph. In my experience, many students are not able to draw the graph accurately. They are very much confused what to do and how to draw the graphs. So today we will discuss some basic concepts related with the distance time graph. So let me start. So in the distance time graph, the first thing is that you have to label the axis of the graph. On the x-axis, you will write down the time slash with its unit. Similarly, on the y-axis, you will write down the distance slash meter. If you will not write down the unit, one mark will be detected from your answers. Now in the first graph, this is a distance time graph. As you can see in the first graph, the values are given. Time is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 while the distance is 20, 20, 20, 20 and 20. So when we will draw this graph according to the values given, we will get a straight line. Now what does this show? Even after passing 4 seconds, the distance traveled is 20 meter. It means that the object is not moving, object is at rest or the object is stationary. From the daily life example, you leave from your home and uh, after traveling, let's suppose one kilometer, you stop at signal. Now the time is passing, but the reading on the speedometer with respect to the distance is not changing. So when the curve is like this, when the line is parallel to x axis in distance time graph, keep this thing in your mind, then this will show that the object is at rest. In another example, time given is same 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, while the distance is given 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, respectively. Now, if we will draw the graph for these parameters, what we will get? We will get a straight line starting from the origin in this way. Now, this line as a constant slope, a constant inclination. On the other end, if I will divide 10 divided by 1, 20 divided by 2, 30 divided by 3, 40 divided by 4, 50 divided by 5, what I will get in speed, I will get in the first column, it will be 0, then it will be 10, it is 10, it is 10, it is 10, it is 10. So this shows that the speed of an object is constant. Now in paper, they will represent the three different things. Whether you can write down is the constant speed, you can write down the uniform speed, and you can write down the steady speed. Let's suppose that this is the speed of object which is represented by A. I will draw another line, a straight line represent by B. Now what about the speed of this object? The speed is constant, one thing which is clear from this graph. But now the speed of B is less than the speed of A because the inclination, the slope of B is less as compared to slope of A. If I will draw the third line, which is a straight line, now its inclination, its angle is much more as compared to A. So speed of C is more than the speed of A while the speed of B is less than the speed of A. Now another scenario, another example. The time is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The distance traveled is 0. It means graph will certainly start from origin. After 1 second, distance is 10. After 2, it is 25, then 45, then 70, and then it is 100. To be on safe side, I have already calculated the speed for this graph. Starting from the origin 0, then speed is 10. How I got the speed? I have divided the distance divided by time. 
then the speed is 0 10 12.5 13 17.5 and last value is 20 what does this show that values in the table will show that the speed of an object is increasing but it is not increasing uniformly it is non-uniform it is a curve graph so if i will draw the graph from this i will get this curve the curve which is increasing in upper direction starting from the origin so it means that the speed is increasing so whenever the shape of the graph is like this it is a curve and its shape is like this then it will show that the speed is increasing move towards the next example example number four the distance is 0 30 55 75 90 100 no doubt the distance is increasing but now actually what is happening in that i have calculated the speed after one second the speed was 30 then it was 27.5 then 25 22.5 and then 20 it means now the speed is decreasing although the distance is increasing similarly in the previous graph the distance was increasing but the speed was increasing in this case the distance is increasing but the speed is decreasing so what sort of the graph we will get from this we will get a curve which is moving like this so this will show the speed of object is decreasing a very easy method to remember that which graph will represent that it is increasing or decreasing for example i have drawn four different graphs it's graph a it's graph b it's graph c it's graph d now which of these graph will represent the speed is increasing and which of them will represent the speed is decreasing from my experience i have learned one thing that if i will draw a circle and i will cut the circle in four segments then all the right side of the curve will represent the increasing for example this curve will represent the increase in speed this curve will represent the increase in speed now these two curves will represent the speed in, in, uh, decrease in speed this curve already we have done in this example in the previous one so this curve will represent speed is increasing so from this locate i have located this so this is the segment number from the circle segment number two so it will represent increasing speed increasing speed now this part this part represent the left hand side left hand side lhs and rhs rhs so the first graph was represented the rhs so i have just written that speed is increasing now this shape is related with the left hand side of the graph so it will represent the decreasing speed as we have the evidence in the tabulation form as well decreasing speed now two other graphs are left these are all the distance time graph let's suppose a ball is placed at the height of 20 meter now its initial speed is zero when it will fall in the downward direction its speed will increase so now this graph the curve which is having a shape like this now this is right hand side or left hand side of the graph of the circle certainly it is related with the right hand side for right hand side we will write down increasing speed and this one this one represent the decreasing speed just in case of a free fall with the air resistance when an object will fall in downward direction initially its speed is more then with the passage of time the up thrust will moving in the opposite direction and resultant force decrease and the speed will decrease so this will represent the decreasing speed so students if you remember this curve this graph you have to remember only a very simple way just draw a circle cut it into four different parts and compare it with the graph which is given in the paper whether it is the right hand side or it is the left hand side 
the last portion related with the distance time graph is that how to calculate the speed from the distance time graph this is a very common mistake what students will do they will just divide distance divided by time and they got the answer although the answer is correct but always remember when the question contain two marks always find the gradient now how you will find the gradient take two points on this line in such a way that the distance between these two point is more than the half of the distance of the full length of the line i will draw a very large triangle and let's suppose that this is 10 this is 50 this is 1 second and this is 5 second so how can i calculate the speed by finding the gradient so speed equal to speed equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 so 50 minus 10 divided by 5 minus 1 40 divided by 4 that is equal to 10 meter per second so this is a standard way by which you can calculate the speed from a distance time graph if you will draw a triangle like this a very small triangle and these two points are not more than the half of the given line your answer will be same because the gradient will remain same but you will not get the full marks the rules for the gradient is that always select two points on a line such that the distance between two points is more than the half of the line so next we will discuss the